Welcome to STEAM PCB Academy. In this video, we're going to discuss about transmission lines and their properties. Plus, we'll see a couple of demos on Cadence or Cadence Security Simulation Tools. So, let's get started. We'll start with what is transmission line. A transmission line is composed of any two conductor that have lengths. Transmission line used to send a signal from point A to point B. As you can see on the screen, the conductor I talked about during the definition of transmission lines are signal path and its return path. Further on transmission line, we can define an ideal transmission line using some circuit elements, for example, R, L and C. Plus, apart from these resistive, inductive and capacitive properties, we have two more very important parameters that we should consider for an ideal transmission line are its characteristic impedance and time delay. You can ask why characteristic impedance and propagation delay is so important. And the answer is, if impedance and propagation delay is uniform throughout the transmission line, there will be no signal integrity problem. Let's discuss what is interconnects. So as I told you on my previous video about signal integrity, I told you between transmitter and receiver, signal travels through different packages, vias, boards, stubs, then it reaches to receiver. So these all the things which comes between transmitter and receivers are interconnects. Now here it comes the very important principle as per Dr. Bogatin's SIPI simplified book that is all the interconnects are transmission line. So that means during designing we have to keep this thing in our mind that route all the interconnects accordingly and make sure all the interconnects should following the same design rules. For example, characteristic impedance should be uniform throughout the line between TX and RX. Further on this, let's discuss what is uniform transmission line. So as its name suggests, uniform means throughout the transmission line, few things or few properties will not change. So what are those few properties that makes a transmission line uniform? First property which makes a transmission line uniform is its cross section down the line. And the second property is how identical signal and its return path is. Now here we're going to introduce another principle from SIPI simplified book. We can say all uniform transmission lines are controlled impedance lines. Let's see a few examples of uniform transmission line. First is twisted pair. Second one is coaxial cable. Third one is coplanar, then microstrip and maybe you have also seen the embedded microstrips and then the sixth one is strip line. Now let's see some examples of transmission line models using Cadence Topology Explorer. It helps you to create topology of your circuit using models. Now let's open Cadence Topology Explorer and here I'm going to place interconnects and uh, let's see what a ideal transmission line looks like so i have placed that okay and if you'll see the property of the first transmission line as we already discussed so what are the two properties of a transmission line one is its characteristic impedance and another one is its length or delay so if you wanted to switch between length and propagation delay you have to just click over here and from there you can switch so now it will start showing the length of a transmission line. All right. Now I'm going to give you one example of a lossy transmission line. So again, we'll click over this one and we'll select micro strip one. Okay. Right click and okay. So this is our lossy transmission line. And as you can see, we have discussed couple of types of losses that is possible in a transmission line. So we have to put all these values here, right? So it has trace conductivity, thickness, uh, dielectric losses, dielectric thickness. What is the thickness of dielectric above the signal line? What is the below the signal line, right? Similarly, you can see one more example of uh, strip line all right so as you can see here we'll see a couple of more extra parameters that will be trace width 
trace thickness and uh, yeah and all, all few things are similar to the the micro strip transmission line so yeah these are the few things and we'll we'll see these things in more details during the simulation part if you want a free trial of cadence tools you can go to the link given on the description and fill the form now let's talk about lc model to represent a transmission line so as you can see on the screen we call it first order model of a transmission line like we discussed a transmission line consists of signal and its return path and if we'll represent that into its lc model so here l will be the loop inductance of every circuit return current and c will be the coupling capacitor between signal and its return path so we can represent a transmission line with this model as well now we'll see how to estimate the capacitance and inductance per unit length for a transmission line so we use a sim very simple equation for that for capacitance per unit length it is 83 divided by its characteristic impedance multiplied by square root of dielectric constant and similarly for inductor it will be 0 0.083 multiplied by the characteristic impedance of a transmission line multiplied by square root of dielectric constant and its unit will be nano henry per inch let's take a very quick example Let's suppose we have a transmission line of 50 ohm characteristic impedance and the dielectric constant we are using it's 4. Then the capacitance per unit length and inductance per unit length of that transmission line will be 3.3 picofarad per inch and 8.3 nano henry per inch. So I got this value from the formulas we discussed earlier. Before going for the derivation of this formula, maybe you can have this question in your mind that why we should know about these capacitor and inductor per unit length and the reason is very simple we can model any transmission line on p spice simulator so as you can see on the p spice i am recording a step response of a 2 inch transmission line which has 50 ohm impedance and the dielectric constant is 4 which has a 200 ohm source resistance and 50 ohm termination register so let's see the step response as you can see we are getting different transient response of different nodes from the circuit we can know okay these are the nodes that we are probing and we are getting different response we'll go into much detail because i've already planned so right now as you can see on the circuit we are using a 50 ohm termination similarly there will be different response if we'll do like open transmission line and uh, in case if it is shorter then there will be different response right now this termination is equal to the uh, the impedance of transmission line if it is less than the impedance of a transmission line what will happen if it is greater than the uh, transmission line impedance then what will be the response similarly if i'll put a capacitive load and inductive load so it is a very huge topic and i've, I've already planned a video on that so for now i just wanted to show you okay you, you why we needed those two equations to model a transmission line on a piece by piece now in the next step i'm going to derive the equations that we have discussed earlier for capacitance per unit length of a transmission line and inductance per unit length why i'm going to do this derivation because through this derivation we're going to learn couple of more equations which are very useful for a design engineer so the first condition for this derivation is so we have to consider that we have infinite number of lc elements on a transmission line okay so this is the first condition that will make sure this is the case only then then this derivation or these equations will be so much effective all right so for this case what will be the total capacitance so c total will be capacitance per unit length multiplied by the total length of a transmission line right let's name it equation one similarly what will be the total inductance so l total will be the inductor per unit length multiplied by the total length of a transmission line 
this will be our second equation now on the given lc model if you recall the lc model that we have discussed earlier if we'll apply network theory and solve the differential equation we'll get two equations out of it so the first equation will be characteristic impedance will be square root of inductance per unit length divided by capacitance per unit length that will be our third equation what else we'll got to know from that another is its time delay so the time delay will be square root of c total multiplied by l total okay let's make it equation 4 okay and similarly if on this equation if we'll put the equation 1 and equation 2 from above uh, discussion we'll get a formula of time delay which will be length square root of cl multiplied by ll all right so this will be also equation 4 all right because we derived it from this one only now what else we use for time delay so for time delay on a transmission line is equal to length divided by the velocity of signal right now what is the velocity of the signal velocity of a signal is so you can just send this here right and this will be here so velocity of a signal will be length divided by time delay all right now we're going to put a value of length from here so if we'll put that equation 4 we'll get velocity will be is equal to 1 upon under root of cl multiplied by ll all right so this will be our equation 4 all right and you can also use these equations to get the estimate velocity of a signal and all all right now what is the relation between speed and dielectric constant if you recall from our discussion what is the relation between speed and dielectric constant right so from that we'll got to know velocity of a signal will be speed of light divided by square root of dielectric constant right and we always this is very known equation that we use to get the velocity of a signal right on a particular dielectric material and here c will be is equal to 12 inch per nanosecond okay so this is the light speed that we are considering here okay now put these values on our equations that we have discussed earlier so we have a constant here all right and we'll put that value on our equations which is velocity is equal to 1 upon under root of cl into ll so after putting this velocity is equal to light speed divided by square root of dielectric constant we'll put that value we'll got to know from equation 5 cl will be is equal to 7 multiplied by dielectric constant divided by inductance per unit length right and similarly if we'll send this here this here it will be the equation for inductance all right now just recall the equations that we have discussed earlier one is z naught is equal to ll upon cl all right and if we'll and velocity is equal to this is equation number five one upon cl multiplied by ll now from these equations if we'll put the value of either cl or ll on this all right we'll get a relation of cl is equal to 1 upon z naught into velocity and similarly so this is very important equation let's write it down on the next page similarly ll will be is equal to z naught upon v right and we know the formula for v right it is c upon square root of epsilon r 
right and if we'll put that value and the constant we'll get the our equation for calculating the capacitance per unit length of a transmission line and inductance per unit length so we'll get this formula cl is equal to 83 upon z naught multiplied by square root of epsilon r and ll is equal to 0.083 multiplied by characteristic impedance multiplied by square root of epsilon r nano henry per inch and this will be picofarad per inch right so these are the equations that we got from this derivation all right plus we got to know a couple of more equations that we can use to estimate the signal speed and estimate the characteristic impedance if we'll know the uh, capacitance and inductance right next from a types of transmission line discussion we have already covered ideal uniform or lossless transmission line and we have discussed it in very detail we have discussed how to estimate the properties of a lossless transmission line now another part is lossy transmission line there we consider different parameters to estimate the losses of a signal throughout the line between transmitter and receiver so as per dr bogatin's book we have divided losses into five different category first category of loss is radiative loss second is coupling to adjacent layer or trace third one is return current loss fourth is skin effect losses and fifth one is thermal losses we will discuss these losses their sources and how to overcome these during lossy transmission line in future video so in conclusion with what i covered in this video i hope you have a better understanding of what a transmission line is the equation you can use to estimate the capacitance and inductance per unit length and finally how cadence modeling and simulation tools help you to get a better understanding of signal topology and behavior see you in the next video